everyone welcome to stochastic calculus for finance one this is section 2.3 on conditional expectation my goal in this section is really to go over conditional expectation and understand the fundamental properties of conditional expectation okay so what is conditional expectation so if you see in the book uh, it's, it's defined this way right expected value I will see it of time n of the stock price uh, in the next time period is just equal to this thing and there's actually the, there's another uh, way to write this and this is shown this way so let me go through it very quickly and explain what this means so let's say like we have like the first two coin tosses are known right so they are known so just for like a, as an example let's imagine like the f the first two coin tosses were like an H and then we got a tail right so we'll, we'll be we'll be at this node so once like we are at time two right and we stand at this node then what is like the expected value of the stock price as we as we standing here at this time period right as we're seeing it when we stand at this time period what is the expected value of the stock price tomorrow right in time three so this should actually be three uh, uh, the stock price at time three right well in, in we know the the risk multiple probabilities that we did, um, uh, introduced earlier so p tilled q tilled then all we need to do really is to just take the probability of going up which is which is p tilled time the stock price in the up scenario then we plus the stock price in the dump scenario time the probability of going down right and then when we sum this up, then we will get this, uh, the expected value of the stock price. I will seeing it at, at time 2, right? Or the stock price in, in time period 3, right? And this is based on like the first two coin tosses being head and then tail, right? The first two coin tosses are known. So this is this is exactly what this thing is trying to tell us, right? Or like actually these two formula are trying to tell us. So the expected value or the stock price in the next period, right? This guy here. Given that we know the first n coin tosses, uh, right, is just the the probability of of the next uh, toss being ahead multiplied by the stock price in uh, the up scenario, and the same thing on the side of the down scenario, and that's pretty much what all conditional expectation is. So let's go to like some of the fundamental problems. Uh, properties of conditional expectations so one of them is linearity right and this is actually a very basic uh, this is a very basic uh, property of expectation right if if this if c1 is constant right and we have two random variable then to find the expectation of like this uh, this expression expression is just being like just we, we can just take the c1 out right take the c2 out and have these two each other in this on their own side. So this that's pretty much it. I don't think there's much explanation needed here. And then there's the idea of taking out what is known, right? So let's say like X, this guy here, depends only on the first n coin tosses, right? So that means that going for X is really not random anymore, right? Because it doesn't depend on the coin toss n plus one, it doesn't depend on coin toss n plus to two or it going to the future. So this is really just like constant, right? So this is nothing more than a constant. So since it's a constant, then we can take it out, right? And that's what's taking coin like taking out what is known. That is because maybe x was at, let's say our time period is here, zero was const was was random. But then suddenly for some reason, once we get time n, this is not const uh, this is not random anymore, right? So it's just a constant. Okay. So now let's try to understand iterated conditioning here. So to understand this, like we, I first need to introduce something and explain something. You know how we, we used to build the binomial tree, right? It was recombining. And by recombining, we mean like when we start somewhere here, let's say this is a stock price at zero, you can go up or you can go down. Or you can go up again, go down, up, down. So here we're saying really like the effect of having a head and then a tail, right? is identical to having a tail and a head 
and so we represented the tree this way as recombining and this is actually a pretty good idea if you're going to implement this in a computer because you save on like this node that you need to do computation on and that's pretty good but there's actually nothing that prevents us from replacing the tree as a non-combining recombining tree which is a more general tree right so that would be something like this so let's say head tail and then we like at this point then we can have again at the head or tail we can head tail right so this time like we're not representing it as a combining but it's fine because even if these things are really the, are really the same level this node can contain just the same information right so if all the information that's in this tree is actually uh in this tree and all the information in this tree is actually here but just like this one this tree right here is a more general one so uh, and I'm introducing this because to try to, under to understand how this is true and or at least have a good intuition of why it's better to visualize the tree this way. Okay, so let me just build the tree now. Okay, so... Start at this node here. We can go up. We'll go down. And again, we can either go up go down go up go down right and maybe i can build a timeline here just so we keep thinking about what we're trying to do here so this is the horizon and and maybe we can call this one this time here m and we can call this time here and and of course like we can have a time zero here but we don't really care about whatever happened in the past because we assume the first n coin tosses are known so we know exactly where this point is at so from here we can try to think about okay so what is the meaning of e to the power n of x right so all this means is that we're taking these points at the horizon here right that i'm showing here and then we're applying some weight to them which and the, the weight we're applying to these points are the probability of occurring as we're standing at point n here so let me just list this probability first so we can see them so the pro so for this one uh we need head head right and if we have both head then we will be at this point and here i'm using the nearest neutral probabilities p tilde q tilde right so this will be p tilde squared right because we need two head and then we have like a head and then a tail right so that would be p Q, right and then we have tail head so that would be pq as well and then tail tail that would be q squared and i forgot the tilde here but well let me just add them okay so that's what e to the power n uh the expected value as a thing of time n of x so let's start to think about this guy now the expected value as a thing at time m of x right so it's just doing the same thing, right? It's just applying some weight. But then we have like two versions of it, right? So at m time m, we can be either at this node or we can be at this node. So let's try to think about the weight uh, that e to the power m of x will apply to these guys. So if we are here, right, then we're applying a weight of p because we're just moving up one. So that will be p tilde. And if we are at this node, then we're just applying a weight of Q tilde, right? Q tilde. And then if we're here, then we need to move up H. So that would be P tilde. And then down here, Q tilde, right? But we're not actually taking, we don't, we don't, we're not talk, actually talking about this guy. We're talking about the expectation as we think of time N, right? Of this value that are occurring at time N, right? So that means for these nodes, we need to apply this weight also to the value of m here. So, so that means like if we are at this node, then that means we need to, at time as we're seeing it at time n, we need to apply a weight of p. So we just applying another weight of p. Then overall, you see that we're applying a, p, a weight of p tilde to this node here, right? P square to this node here, and here we, to this node we're applying a p also, but 
e to the power m already applied another uh, a weight of q that we're seeing here then that means now we have uh, q p tilde and same here so to this node we're tackling it a weight of q right so you just need to multiply these two guys also by this q and then voila notice that basically they're applying at the end of the day whether we're taking e to the power n directly or e uh, a expected value of n i mean i keep calling this power uh, expected value i retain it of time n of e to the of e e m right at the end of the day they are applying the exact same weight at, uh, to these final nodes right and that is a very quick and in, in, intuition as to why this holds right okay because e to the power m applies some weights here and then because we're taking a time n we're applying some weight as well i i don't know what i keep calling this e to the power m but um, you, you know what i mean by this e is just the expectation i was seeing it of time n of x voila and the last one independence uh since we say x depends only on coin tosses n plus one through n right so that means if you have a timeline here let's draw it zero n um, so that means like maybe before it was not random and then suddenly once we hit this time and going forward it's being random right so the expected value of as you're seeing of time n of x is equal just to the expected value of x right and that makes sense because the randomness start here so whether we starting looking at the expected value as you're seeing of time zero right or as we're seeing it as time n this two this two will match because before here there is no randomness the randomness starts after 